this is Mike Check 95 here with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review and the scenery is a bit different. Before we get into the review, I would like to say that if you enjoyed this video or if you've enjoyed a lot of other videos in the past like the mashups, the reviews, the event covers and everything, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and everything, support Mike Check Productions in any way that you can, and uh, hopefully you enjoy this review. Uh, my cohorts, uh, both Joker and Krieger Margin, are not going to be attending this review. Uh, Krieger Margin and Joker, Joker and I, all three of us, have gotten COVID uh, a few weeks back. Over the time span of us uh, getting through quarantine and whatnot, um, so we're We've been out of quarantine for about a week now, uh, Krieger Margin for about a couple days. I do want to say on a side note, I do apologize for the content slowing down quite a bit because of the whole COVID thing and everything and whatnot. Uh, I'm running off of no notes on this review, so do, I do apologize if this review seems a bit uh, clunky and a bit stallish and it's also kind of warm in here so I'm going to try to make this review kind of short. So the movie that I'm going to be reviewing today is a movie that I've actually have heard about and seen floating around on streaming medias for the last couple years and some people have talked about it say that it's actually pretty good and everything. Uh, the movie is Last Shift. Last Shift is about a female rookie cop who gets uh, the job of doing the night watch of a police station that is closing down. And while she's doing the night watch, a lot of weird stuff starts happening. She pretty much has to fight against these supposed paranormal or maybe actual uh, people who are trying to break in and possibly kidnap her and or kill her. The film came out in 2014 and it is a psychological horror film and it was directed by Anthony de Blasi, written by Anthony de Blasi and Scott Poli and it was produced by Scott and Mary Poli themselves. The ratings of this movie are strange. The critics absolutely loved this movie but the fans I guess were not too much. 80% um, of Google users enjoy this movie. On IMDb, it has a rating of 5.8 out of 10, and on Rotten Tomatoes, the critics rated 100%, which I highly doubt a psychological horror movie would be a 100% rating uh, by critics, even though it's only 9 reviews by critics. But uh, out of 100 plus ratings from the fans, the audience, it gets a 51%. So, it's definitely two sides of the coin when it comes to that. Critics absolutely love it, fans not so much. Going into this film, I did have a set expectation and whatnot because I went into this film pretty much blind that it was going to be at least decent and that it was kind of like a, a paranormal ghost movie. I felt like, okay, so the story was good. I liked the story a lot because it, was act it actually was intertwined with the main character and her father who was killed by this family of uh, cultists and the payment spirits are attached to this uh, police building. The fact that they're messing with her because of the tie-in with her father and everything was actually pretty interesting. I've given a couple days of thought from seeing this movie because I saw it a few days ago and it, I know it goes with the story and everything but it's kind of coincidental that the daughter of the father who was killed by the Payman family happens to be the cop, the last cop to do the night watch of this police district building that the Payman family had committed suicide in after being caught, or at least three members of it. The acting was good at some parts. It was good at some parts and there were some parts that kind of felt like that she should be more scared, more terrified. I know she's trying to act like she's tough and trying to get through this and everything because the, these spirits are trying to mentally break her down. I feel like some of the points of her being scared on some of the jump scares, the, you'll get to that in a second. 
she didn't really portray being as terrified or whatever. Because I feel like she'd be more traumatized at some points of the night than she was in the movie. And it, this, this is like a minor gripe. It's not really like a huge, huge complaint and everything. Because she played, I feel like she played her character really well. The jump scares. The cinematography of how some of these jump scares were shot were actually really good. Like whoever ran cinematography for this film was fantastic and the way they shot it was really good and really interesting. The only scene that I remember actually in my memory before watching this film is where she opens the door and there's all the chairs in the room and then it pans back to her looking down the hallway because the noise distracts her and then she pans back into the room the door she just opened and the chairs are all stacked up in the center like a giant tower of chairs just folded up or stacked on top of each other in a weird way. There's a subplot going on in the film where this homeless man is just trying to get into the police building for some reason. Um, that's another thing that I want to touch base on is that I kind of feel like I wanted the homeless man to have a bigger connection to the whole story and have a connection to, I would say, the Payman family, but he was just kind of there as a nuisance. He was there just to be there to add to the body count, I guess you would say. Because there was a point in the film where he's like kicking over boxes and looking through papers on top of these file cabinets and everything, and it's like maybe he's looking for something, something important that could re uh, relate to him or maybe the pay payment family or maybe has a connection with the, the female officer. And they didn't really touch base after that. They kind of just locked him up and then he's dead about 30 minutes later. I don't remember if the CGI was super spotty. I mean, this film is kind of aged, so I think it was kind of grainy in some spots here and there, but uh, it's, just, it's a smaller, compact film. Probably not that big of a budget. I forgot to look up the budget. I apologize for that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, can't find a budget for this film or a uh, box office. So I think it was a, a straight to streaming uh, release and whatnot. And I know this is what the guy was, the director was going for, De Blasi. He wanted to keep the film in one central focal spot. It was in the police building. But I kind of feel like the story could have had a bit more on the runtime, a bit more beefed out if they actually showed some of the uh, scenes that were being explained and exposition in between characters or in between like scare scenes or in between phone calls I should say in this film and it was all just exposition dumped out in dialogue. I personally wanted to see some of that actually on screen. This film kind of reminds me of The Traveler but it's done better than The Traveler but at the same time, this film has its issues as well. Because recording in one location with a kind of a beefy story like this without showing more on screen what happened instead of just telling people what happened, kind of, I wouldn't say it completely hurts the movie, but it does put a little mark on the film that was like, oh well, that would have been kind of cool to see on film, to kind of see how that all unfold, uh, kind of actually show what happened to her father instead of just, you know, he, he's, here's a photo of him dead while she's freaking out about the hallucination. There was one point where I guess one of the Payman uh, cult members break in and is like taunting her and whatnot and then she shoots herself. That was confusing because I couldn't really tell if she was in a hallucination or an actual person. I had to actually read the plot of the film to kind of give, to kind of tell me that oh she was an actual person, not an actual hallucination and everything. That was a little bit. I think that was kind of lost in the subtext when it came to that. The ending was blatantly obvious, honestly, because at the same time as all this is going on, this hazmat team is supposed to be coming in between the hours of 12 and 4 to come help with the cleanup stuff as she's watching the building, and her dad starts calling her or the spirit of her father starts calling her on her phone and keep warning her that hey more are coming you need to protect the place you need to take them out you need to make sure that they don't get in and 
as those scenes are unfolding, I'm like, okay. So we have this hazmat team coming in later. There's all this spooky shit going on with the spirits and the m payment member breaking in and whatnot. And she's completely fucking losing her mind. Not to mention the side plot of the homeless man that kind of just gets dumped to the side. It's kind of obvious that she's going to hallucinate the hazmat crew as payment members and she's going to kill them. And that's what happens. So after she kills the hazmat crew, she gets shot by the officer that uh, she had replaced earlier in the night. And she's trying to explain, oh no, like, they were the cult members are trying to get in, yada yada yada. That's when she looks over and realizes, oh, it's the hazmat crew that killed them. And the movie ends like a somber, uh, evil ending, like, oh, well, we got you, blah, 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 blah. I did actually write a review on Google about this, and this is probably the first movie I did a Google review on. So I gave the film three stars, and I said, been hearing about this movie for several years, and my roommate finally showed me it. I enjoyed the setting and the premise at all, kind of reminded me of The Traveler, but done better. But I still felt like this movie wasn't hitting all cylinders, in my opinion. The ending, the ending of the film, for me, was a bit too obvious once Dad kept saying that they're coming and you need to stop them. I think my main issue is that I wanted more visuals of what happened the night of the shootout with the payment cult and the authorities instead of just explaining it over exposition. I get that the director wanted to keep it in an enclosed spot and keep it simple, and I like that. I like a lot of movies that like to keep it all in like one room. They can tell a whole story with that. They can do, they can, you can do a lot of stuff if, like, say like if I wanted to shoot a movie in this garage and I had a really good story going for it, you can do a lot with that. And you can actually have stuff going on while stuff also ha happening in the background. That stuff can actually happen. But at the same time, the limitations also kind of hurt if your story is too in-depth. I feel like this story is too in-depth to keep it in one position and that it needed more uh, sceneries, it needed more um, filming spots to kind of I guess show more that's happening. But to kind of sum up, uh, somewhere at the end of it, I said just with so much backstory exposition, I kind of feel like this film needed more oomph to it, but it was a good effort. On a 10 star rating, I, I don't think it's a 50%. I don't think it's a 5 out of 10. And I obviously am not saying it's a 10 out of 10. This film needed more to it. Like it was, again, it was like watching The Traveler with Val Kilmer, but it was so much better than The Traveler. But at the same time, like, I still feel like this film needed, it needed more. It just, it, everything about this film that I'm pretty much saying in summarization that it needs more of to make the film more enjoyable. For a final rating, I would have to give it like a 6.7 out of 10. It's not completely horrible. It could have been a lot worse, honestly. I feel like some people are being a little bit too hard on this film because it's not bad. It's a gr it's a good movie. It's not great by all means, but it's good. I like what they're trying to go with it. It's just I am kind of like in the middle here when it comes to the critics versus the fans. Would I watch it again and or would I recommend it for other people to watch? Um. On my own accord, by myself, not really, I wouldn't watch it again because it's not really a film I want to go out of my way and watch ten times in a row. Uh, if I'm with like, a group of friends, like say with Horror Fest coming around the corner, um, if I had picked it for Horror Fest uh, and I've already seen it before, I would watch it again. This definitely would be a film, uh, I would, okay, I take that back, I would at least watch this film one more time just to kind of get a second opinion, get a second viewing, knowing what's going to happen, seeing how it all pans out again with the knowledge I already have to kind of get a better feel of the film to see if my rating goes up, goes down, or stays the same. If you like paranormal, psychological horror films stuck in one location, by all means watch it. All in all, those are my final and closing thoughts of the film. It, like I said, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was good. It was average. So, on that note, 
This is Mic Check 95 with another Mic Check Productions Mic Check Movie Review. And hopefully after this review, we'll get back into the swing of things and we'll be able to get more content out. Again, we do apologize for not getting much content out this past couple weeks. COVID kind of fucking slammed us hard and we're kind of coming back up from that. But until then, this is Mic Check 95. Thank you.